CSS layout. There are different ways to lay out your web page using CSS. Page layout is the process of placing and arranging the text and image content on the page to produce a visually pleasing page. We need to place all the elements in the proper place on the page so it will look like our wireframe. So what's the best way to do that? Up until now, our elements have been in normal flow meaning each element is displayed one after another based on how we placed them in the HTML. Some might take more or less room, but they're all in order according to the HTML. This is normal flow. What are some ways to take blocks or elements out of normal flow? There are options like float that will shift an element to the right or left and allow content to display wrapped around it. The only time I use floats is if I have a small image, button, or logo that I want text to wrap around. Keep in mind that float should not be used to lay out an entire page. I rarely will use float. The position property can also be used to take elements out of their normal flow. All elements in normal flow have a position property value of static meaning in normal flow, all elements display one after the other, and if you scroll, they're going to scroll with the page. Position relative changes this flow. It would reference a certain point from where the element would normally be in normal flow. Position absolute would be removed completely from normal flow and positioned relative either to its parent, if the parent has a position relative, or absolute to the viewport of the page itself. It usually will leave normal flow and go to the top left of the page. Then you use offset values to move it where you want to. Both position relative and position absolute should be used very sparingly. I've only used these properties when I have a very specific reason to do so. But again, not to lay out the entire page. They can be very challenging to use, especially for beginning web learners. And if they are overused, they can quickly become a nightmare. Position fixed will fix an element in place so that it does not scroll with the page. This is popular for navigations or background images to remain in place as the user scrolls. But again, it would not address the needs of laying out the entire page. Flexbox is another layout method if you want your items to be in a row or column. It uses the display property with a value of flex. The children of that element will lay out as rows or columns. What's great about Flexbox is how responsive it can make your page. It's great for things like product galleries or photo galleries where the rows can start out as four across and as the device gets smaller, they can go to three and then two and then one when you get down to a phone. It makes it really easy to have beautifully responsive areas on your page when there are a number of items grouped together. I also love Flexbox for the horizontal links in the navigation or menu. It does a great job of spacing the links to give them a nice look, especially if one link is longer than the rest. But again, it's not the best for laying out an entire page. It works great on certain content, but not the whole page. Grid is the method we'll use in this course to lay out our page. It's a lot like Flexbox in many ways, but where Flexbox is one dimensional, a row or a column, Grid is two dimensional, rows and columns at the same time. Grid makes it much easier to lay out a page without having to ever use float or positioning. Grid also allows you to move blocks around on the page regardless of the order that they are in HTML. You can still use Flexbox for certain parts of the page. Grid and Flexbox can be used together. When you start taking items out of the natural flow, sometimes they can overlap on top of each other. So far, we've seen values that reference top, bottom, right, left, that have to do with a two-dimensional X and Y axis, but there is a Z axis that is three-dimensional and has to do with which element will be on top of overlapping elements or the stacking order. 
Perhaps you've used word processors or other programs that allow you to bring items to the front or send them to the back. It's the same idea. It's called Z-index. Z-index is the property name and the value you give it is a number. The bigger the number, the more toward the front that element will be in the stacking order.